Okay, another auto commands demo coming to you. This one's been requested a few times in chat as well as in some YouTube comments. So, of course, uh, you're all the enlightened people, not Reddit users. So, I'll answer the question now. The basic question is what do you mean when you talk about events and patterns and how do they work together? Right? So, I'm just going to show defining an auto command and show you how you can sort of connect the different pieces of this. And I think it'll hopefully make sense once we're done. So, Suppose we've got some file autopath.lua, right? We're just going to define some new uh, auto command here. And let's do it at first just on file type. So this is the event. An event is basically like a special type of, I guess, event, obviously, but it's a list of names. You can see what those names are by looking up what the events are inside of Neovim. And so each one has its own basically type of things that you will match against. For example, when you add a buffer, the pattern that you specify will be the thing that your auto command tries to match against. I'm going to show you what that means in a second, but I just want you to recognize that it can be different for each of the different types of events. So for buffers, they generally match against buffers. But if we did something like file read, and that's going to match against the file name. And in the case of file type, file type is going to match against whatever the setting has been set to. So let's go ahead and show that right now. In this case, what we want to do is we can say pattern equals, we could say something like Lua. This means this will only get fired for Lua events. And then what we can also do now is we specify a callback, some function that we want to run. And for now, what we actually have to do is schedule some aspects of this. If you're not familiar with this, I have a different video talking about scheduling, but basically when an auto command gets fired, it may not be possible to actually do the printing at that time. So we can do something like vim.schedule a function here and then print, hey, we got called. Okay, nothing too exciting yet, right? So if I execute this file and I open up just like example.txt, Notice nothing shows up in this printed area down here. In fact, we can make that a little bit bigger. Uh, but if we did example.lua, see how now it shows up? That's because file type, this Lua pattern matches against the file type of this buffer, which is Lua, as opposed to when we did this for text, it was just text. Okay, so that's the first part that you need to understand about patterns. The second thing is we can actually pass a list of patterns here. If we also said text and we uh, let's quit out of NeoVim and open it up again so that we don't have both of these defined at the same time. And we execute this again. And now we edit example.txt. Uh, I didn't spell this right because it's supposed to be text. Sorry. If we uh, open this up now, we're going to get called. That's actually a good example. One of the things I was going to bring up later, but since I fat fingered my explanation, we'll just do it at this very moment. So notice how even though this file's name contains TXT, oh, right there, that's where it says TXT, it's a text file, right? So when we look at the file type, it says text. So we have to make sure that our pattern matches the file type. If we were doing something with buffers or files, then we would want to match the file path. Okay. And those are each explained inside of the help for each different event, which is where you would find out which events you need to use. So given all of that info, we now have this capability of matching between these two different things. However, from inside of this callback, you probably want to know more information about what you're currently matching against. And this is where um, this thing called expand, the function expand comes into play. And expand basically is a way to get variables back out from Vim. It's quite old. We'll think about ways to make this a bit easier for people, but, but these things for sure File, buff, and match, a file, a buff, and a match. These are all interesting things that you might need to use inside of your auto command, and they sort of relate to what gets matched against. So let's make ourselves a little table here, local data. Okay, and we might just do something like buff vim.fn.expand, and then you just need to type it exactly like what we saw in the expand documentation, bu documentation below. vim.fn expand a file, right? 
and then lastly match vim.fn.expand a match okay and so these will be different depending on what situation you're going to be experiencing for your auto command but in this case if we let's quit out again so that we've got a fresh slate here we could have put this in auto group but i didn't want to cover too many topics in one if we execute this and we open up the example txt we look at messages you'll notice that it says okay the buff number is four so this buff number here is four the file is example.txt that's correct and then the match is that text match these two items okay if i edit this file again and we check messages notice now the buffer is one because that's the buffer we matched against and file is autopat.lua and the match right which is basically this pattern that we're matching against has to be lua now if we did one more example here and we said star and we executed this and now we opened example.py okay and now we read messages again you'll see that the match here was python because these are like regular expressions, right? So they use Vim's regular expression syntax. So if you say something like star here, then you'll be able to match against Python, even though that wasn't explicitly inside of here. So instead you could just change this whole thing to be star or something like that. And then you would always match no matter which file type uh, you're encountering. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview of what is what is happening inside of these auto command patterns and hopefully Calface dude the twitch chatter that requested this this answers your question thanks everybody i will see you later